Hello, everybody. Welcome to this month's webinar. This is the webinar for um, November 2015. Today, we're going to be talking about backups. And we talk a lot about backup your site, backup your site, backup your site. I mean, it's something that I go on every single time when it's time for a, a new plugin or a new theme or a new update, or if you're updating your theme, like I'm always saying, okay, do a backup first and then do this. Do a backup first and then do this. Well, the thing is, like making a backup is super easy. Like it's not really hard. You install a plugin, you click a button to do a backup. Um, or maybe you set up a schedule and it automatically back up, backs up. But there's really no, there's not a lot of instruction out there how to restore from a backup. Now, granted, a lot of times we won't need the restoration feature. There, there is, doesn't come a time where you really like have a catastrophe that you really need to restall completely from scratch. Maybe you just need one little thing restalled or things like that. So we're going to talk about some of these different things that are going on and um, just how to restore a website from a backup state. And we'll talk about three different plugins to do this. Uh, two of them are premium and one of them is free with a premium add-on. And then we'll talk about some of the other tools that you may need depending on what it looks like or which backup solution that you pick. So I am no in no way like endorsing any one of these. I'll tell you which one's my favorite and the reasons why. Um, I'm not being paid for any of these. And yeah, that's exactly, those are the things that I just kind of wanted to share right off the top of the webinar. And so today, let's go ahead and dive right in. And let's talk first about backups. We'll talk a little bit about backups. I don't have any slides, but we're going to talk about and just kind of go through the dashboard and talk about a few things. So let's go ahead and um, we're just on a, uh, a subdomain, backup.yourwebsiteengineer.com. And we actually are going to also use restore.yourwebsiteengineer.com. I've got these two domains because I wasn't exactly sure how this live webinar would work when the second plugin that I'm going to demo, like you actually have to delete all the files off your server and then use the zip file backup. And I wasn't sure how all the rest of the backups would work after that happened. So it's going to work. We're going to, we're going to back up and restore with three different methods, three different ways. And then we're going to see what actually happens. So let's go ahead and, and dive right in. So we're right now running backup.yourwebsiteengineer.com. I've got a few plugins here. Some of them were just ones that were installed. Some of them are here. Like I've uninstalled a few of them so we can see some things in our backups. But the three plugins that we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about Vault Press, we're going to talk about Backup Buddy, and we're going to talk about Back WP Up. And so let's talk about those real quickly first, and then we'll dive in to look at kind of the different settings and the different things, and we'll talk about how to actually do a backup. That'll be a very, very brief section of this, this webinar. And and then we'll talk about, and then we'll get right into why you're here. You want to know how to restore from a backup. So Vault Press is a plugin that is created by the company that I work for, Automatic. And it is a, it's a, it's a standalone plugin that actually kind of integrates with Jetpack a little bit. If you have Jetpack activated, it will actually go from the menu item up here and it'll actually be in with all the Jetpack stuff. So it's kind of like an extension to um, um, Jetpack, but it's like a premium version. It starts at $5 per month. And basically what happens is you install the plugin, you activate it, and then you go pay for it and you get an API key. You put the API key on your WordPress site and then you, and it just starts working. It just starts backing up. Like it does everything for you. There's not a lot of setup. I mean, there's virtually zero setup. You just have to go ahead and do that. Now you can go in and you can add some of your server um, credentials and different things to vault press. And that's going to give vault press the ability to restore. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, but vault press is by far the simplest plugin to get up and just start backing up your site right away. Again, it starts at $5 per month that backs up your site once per day. And then they have uh, additional plans that are a little bit more expensive than that. And it also has plans. There's plans that you can uh, you can bundle a Kismet with Vault Press. And so this isn't commercial about which plugin to buy. I'm just telling you a little bit about which plugins that are out there. Okay, so that's Vault Press, $5 per month per site. So it starts at $5 per month per site. Backup Buddy, and I believe the last time I checked, it was about $60 for a single site license, or you can maybe pay $80 or $100, something along those lines for like up to 10 sites. And it's going to be, it's so it's more it's more economical if you have lots of sites that you want to keep backed up. And this is one of the, the better uh, standalone plugins that I've seen. It's actually the best one that one that a lot of people say, if you're, if you really, um, if you really are using WordPress, you want to move sites from one place to another. If you've got client work, like backup buddy is going to do everything that you need for it. The, the cool part about this one is, is you can back up your things. You have to set up a, you have to set up a schedule. So you have to say when you want to back up and what do you want to back up and what don't you want to back up. And then, um, and then they have a really nice UI to actually restore a site. And we'll show you exactly how to do that. It's going to be very nice and easy. And, and you really don't need to know any programming whatsoever. You just kind of follow the steps in the checklist and you can go ahead and get restored pretty, pretty simply. 
Again, like I said, you do have to d remove, like if you want to if you want to restore your website from last week, you actually have to go into your server, delete everything from your server, and then reinstall from there. So it's kind of it's kind of iffy because your website will be down for a few minutes as you're restoring, but if you've got like massive amounts of bugs in it, or like you've got malware installed or whatever, that's really a pretty simple solution. You just delete everything, and then you put an import a file in there, and your zip file of your la latest and greatest backup, click the button and you can go and you're good to go. So that's pretty simple backup buddy. And then back WP up is kind of the industry leader in, in free WordPress backup plugins. And it does exactly what you, you think it would. It does almost all of the features of backup buddy, the backing up part, but the, it's a little bit more tedious and cumbersome to actually restore a backup once it's been, you know, put onto your, like once, once you've backed up, then you have to kind of know what you're doing to get it restored, either the database or the files itself. And this one will be the most tricky one. And we'll talk about this and I'll show you exactly how to do that and whatnot. So let's go ahead and we'll start with vault press. We're going to go in area of ease. So vault press backup buddy, and then back WP up and we'll show, and hopefully as I'm backing up and restoring these sites, uh, everything will work well because I'm going to restore and back up and we will, we'll, hopefully we'll, we'll know what has been not restored and what is restored. So let's, let's go about that. So the very first thing that I want to do is I want to go in and create a new post just so that we can say that we've we've got a new post in there. I believe all of this other content that's in here has been backed up once. And so if we want to restore up or back up that doesn't have this content, we need to at least have something so we know that is there. So we'll do test on live webinar. And then we will just put some yay text. And that'll be good. So now we can see that we actually have a new post there and we want to, we want to make sure that it's working. Let's go ahead and refresh on our homepage. We can see now that yay, let test on live webinar. We actually have four posts on this website and we have, um, two pages. I believe if we look at the dashboard, but we just want to make sure that we've got the, the right backup and everything. So we've got four posts and two pages. So that's what we're looking at. Okay. Now let's start with vault press. Let's go on over to vault press and vault press. There's not a lot that you can do from right here within WordPress itself. We have, um, it just says our full backup is hundred percent complete. Vault press has 14 snapshots of your site dating back to Wednesday. And Wednesday was the time when I set up this site that, so to get ready for this webinar. And it shows that we've got four post pages. It shows everything that we've got currently right now. And so live activity, it's processing changes because we just made some changes. But the big thing you want to do is you just want to go to the word or the vault press dashboard. And this will go in and it'll show you all of your sites that you have. And you can see that I've got some security threats that I haven't addressed. I've got a few sites that are outdated. Um, these are just some that I don't use very often. And so I want to make sure that I'll, I'll get to those at one point. It does say there's a security threat. And so let's go ahead and, and take a look at the backup first. The security threat's not as, as crucial of a deal. We can see that right here and what it is. And it says that there's some hidden code and we can see exactly the file infected. So this is one of the cool things so that's part of the backup buddy um it, it looks like it's part of backup buddy i'm not too concerned about that right now because this is a test site but that's one of the cool things about vault press gives you security as well as backup so if we go into our backups page we will see right here that um let's see we have the most recent backup was at 10 40 a.m it's 12 12 um PM right now. And it looks like it does major backups when it sees, you know, sees new things. And of course there's a few dates and times that, that are missing here. And again, I'm not too concerned about this because there's very little activity. I think also what happens is that there actually has to be visitors to your website for it actually to trigger the cron job to, to back up. So in this time I was working this morning, I was getting everything set up for this morning's webinar. And then a few times over the last few days is when I was actually visiting the site and pinging the site to make sure that I was getting all set up and ready for the webinar. So if we wanted to, we could just go ahead and we could restore all the way back to this point. We could go back to November 5th. And, um, all you have to do is basically you can click view backup to see all of the stuff that's there. Um, it basically is going to show you that it's got the database and it's got the, my, uh, WP content. It shows all the plugins. It shows all the files. It shows pretty much everything that we need. Um, in, in a WordPress site. And if you wanted to, you could restore just a single table or just a single, um, yeah, just a single table if you want, or you can restore everything. If we click on it, we can say we can want to restore this table right here and it's just going to go ahead and do it. Um, the other thing that we can do from the backups page is we can actually, 
Um, from here, we can just say restore. And so if we scroll down here, we can just hit restore and then it will go ahead and prepare a backup. Say that we just want to restore the database because we haven't changed any files per se. So we could just go ahead and say we want to change the database and we could say prepare backup. It's going to do its little thing. It's going to, it's, it's very, very quick because of the fact my database is very, very small. And then it says basically vault press will restore your, your website to backup at your website engineer.com. And I have added the credentials in there. So it has that connection. And now I can just click the restore now button. And it's got some text like it's warming up, like it really has to, you know, warm up. But basically, it's going to go and it's going to say uh, restore in process. It's going to all the pre flight checks happened. It is basically just going to go ahead and restoring this branch. And so that's, that's how easy, simple that vault press can actually back up and restore a website. So it works very, very simply. It can just go ahead and do this. I'll see how long this is actually going to take. If it's going to take a while, I, I might have to abort this, but, um, I really want to just make sure that it, it works like, so we can see the differences so we can see exactly what this looks like. So let's go ahead and just let that run just a little bit. And okay. It's 50% done. So it won't take very long. It's a very, very small site. Again, this will take a, longer depending on what size of site that you're running and different things. I would recommend if you make a, if you really need to just restore the functionality of maybe a few days ago within your database, maybe you just restore the file or the, the database tables that have been changed. If you've made posts or pages or you want to redo comments, like those are different specific pages or uh, those are different tables inside your WordPress database. So like comment meta and comment, those are two files, two database tables that, um, that control all the comments for your site. So if you need to roll that back, that will take a lot less time, especially if you're using plugins that are tracking your site's activity or, you know, doing, you know, seeing how many times people are locked out. There could be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of records that it will take just a little while to actually restore your database in that process. So we're at 50%. We're going to hang out here just another minute or so. There isn't a whole lot else that I can, um, that I can do while we're waiting on the restore. And Mark asked, what would the access to the site be during the restore? And so we can go ahead and take a look. We can do a refresh here. And um, it looks like it's still working. It hasn't restored that post table yet. So this is still there. I think it just goes in and it actually continues to keep the site pretty much live while it's restoring, while it's doing what it needs to do. And then if there would be, for an example, like once it's restoring that post table, which is where all of this data is happening from the website, then that would probably show up like we're briefly down for maintenance. Kind of like the the same little line that says when when WordPress is updating from you know a core version or whatnot. So we're still just kind of hanging out here, seeing what happens there. And let's go in while we're waiting. Let's go ahead and talk about Backup Buddy a little bit. I think I can still access this page while we're waiting on Backup Buddy. So, or while we're waiting on Vault Press, sorry. So Vault Press, like I said, is it's as easy as that. You install it, you click restore, and you can easily restore your website. It's totally worth $5 per month to back up your site once per day. Backs everything up. Um, the only thing that it doesn't back up, Vault Press, or Vault Press does not back up your WordPress core files. And so when you do a full restore or you have to move your site from one place to another, what happens is you'll have to actually install WordPress first and then you can start start that because it's kind of silly for vault press to back up hundreds and hundreds of thousands of versions of wordpress when you know they can just pull wordpress from the repository they make a note of what version you're running and it kind of works like that so that's pretty much the difference like vault press backs up all your data but it does not back up your um, does not back up your core WordPress files. It does back up your plugins. So it knows what your plugins are. It backs up your themes. So it knows what your themes are, but does not back up WordPress. And But WordPress is easy to download. You just go to wordpress.org and you can download it straight from there. So not a big deal whatsoever. Okay, so Backup Buddy, and again, like I said, this is a uh, about a sixty dollar a year, sixty to a hundred dollar per year, and then you can use it for one site or multiple sites depending on that license that you purchase. And so, what you want to do is when you get to Backup Buddy, you actually have to set up and configure your backup. You know, you got to make sure that it actually is running regularly. And there's two different types of backups that I recommend making regularly, and they're database backups and they're complete backups. And what this means is, like, the database is all of your posts, your pages 
is. It stores your data of what plugins are turned on, what is your active plugin, all your settings for all your plugins, all your widgets, all that kind of stuff is saved in the database. And that stuff changes really regularly. If you go in, you post regularly, if you have comments regularly, if you have a store that are selling things regularly, all of those things happen very, very regularly. So you want to make sure that you are updating that database regularly. So I recommend depending on the traffic or how much, how active your site is, you want to back up at least once a day, maybe once, you know, once a week at the bare minimum. I know that for the most part, like I only update my websites once a week with a post or two. And like that could be enough. Backup Buddy has a really nice feature that you can go ahead and you can say, choose a backup profile to run and you can say database only. And then you can go ahead and you can just, it's going to start doing the database right now. Let's go ahead and, and cancel out of that. But you can also set it up here to configure. So you can say, you know, you want to say it's a database only, then you just go ahead and you can set it up and configure it to run regularly. And the same thing with a, a complete backup. You want to do a complete backup. I want to say a complete backup once per month. You can do it as often or as frequent as you like, but once a month is a, a bare minimum. That way, in case, you know, your, your theme files don't update that often. And every once in a while, you add a new plugin or two. But say, for example, like if, you're, if your website gets hacked, you can go back to last month's version of all your core files, your WordPress files, and it should be okay. If the, if the hack happened, you know, like 32 days ago, then you'd have to go back two months worth of data. So you just have to kind of gauge and you have to kind of gauge like how much space is worth to you because you actually have to store these backups somewhere. VaultPress, they take care of all of it for you. The, it's just stored in the cloud. It's completely free to store. You know, well, it's part of the $5 per month plan, but backup buddy, you actually have to store these somewhere. And what you can do is you can actually like set up where these things are going to store in different places. So you can actually uh, store them right on your server. You can store them in the cloud somewhere like on Amazon S3. Uh, Backup Buddy has a really cool thing called... Um it's, it's called the, uh, the iTheme stash and you can save up to like, I forget how many gigabytes worth of your backup websites on there. And so all of that stuff is there. And right, if you just go to the backup setting, it's going to show you all the ba backups that are, are, are recent. So these are the, all the ones that we've made in the last few days. You can see that my site is only 23 megabytes. So pretty small. And the database is only 56 kilobytes or it got up to um, 64 kilobytes a few hours ago. And so you can see all of the schedules and whatnot are right in here. And you can see exactly, um, how often I've got my thing to set up. So I'm sending things, um, to the weekly database. I'm sending them to my stash, uh, and I'm sending them to my stash for the monthly backups as well. So that's all there. And those are all enabled. Uh, uh, Greg asks, if you go back to change your database, does that delete any current posts that may have been created? Yes. So if, when I'm backing up and I'm restoring this one, which this is kind of unusual. This is taking so long. But um, if I go back and I restore, it's going to like basically take away all of those backups that, that were there. So if I go to VaultPress, let's just go to my dashboard, VaultPress, and take a look here. Hopefully this is the right site. Um, yeah. So if, if I... If I want to go back to uh, right here, so this is the one that's restoring and we had one post, one page, one comment, one theme, nine plugins. And that's what we had back yesterday at 1140 PM. And right now we have three posts, two pages, nine plugins, four uploads. So we've got some changes here. Basically what we're doing is we're going to say, we don't want this one. 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 We want to go back to this version. And so anything that's happened after November 5th at 1140 PM, then it's completely wiped out from your website. It's not there anymore. But um, if you wanted to go in, if we would have, instead of restoring this, but the big restore button, if we would have went into the view backup and then went in restore special tables, like if we would have only went in and restored the post and the post meta tables, which are the two tables that control your posts on your website, then everything else on your website would be intact. And only that would, only the post category would be the one that would be changed. So that's something to think about. So I, what I really like about backup or vault press is it gives you that granularity that you can actually go in and restore specific tables to your website. So that's super nice. So that, I hope that answers your question, Greg. So with backup buddy, we've got all of these things set up. I've, I've scheduled these things. They're ready to go. And the biggest thing is we just have to make sure that we have a backup. So that's the big thing. We can't really do a restore if we don't have a backup. So let's go ahead and work through that. Let's go to restore and migrate. And we're going to go ahead and go over to restore that your website engineer.com. And there's nothing there right now. So we get a completely white screen. 
So what we want to do is we want to send, you can do it two ways. So if you're comfortable with an FTP client, then, um, um, let's see, going, going back real quick, Mark asks, how many versions of vault Pre will vault press keep? It keeps, uh, it depends on your plan. I'm pretty sure how, how long those take. So if we, or how many versions that it takes, let's take a look real quick while we're on the topic of vault press and then we'll move back to backup buddy. Um, the plans in the pricing. So uh, the basic, which is $9 a month that has spam protection. So it, I guess it looks like they're, they're doing a kismet and vault press. So instead of $5 a month, it's, it's $9 a month to do that, but they keep 30 days worth of backup. And then if you do the premium, which is $30 per month, then they do a full archive backup. Uh, I believe too, that they, I want to say that with past that 30 days, like it's still there, like it's not really deleted, but that's only that you can have access to the safekeepers or the wordpress.com support should be able to help restore those things. So um, those are the two plans. It looks like basic and premium. Okay. So we still got nothing there. And what we're going to do is uh, the, if you are comfortable with using an FTP editor, this may be a good step for this. We definitely need an FTP editor for back WP up. But this one's really cool in the fact that you can actually send your import um, buddy.php to a specific destination. And so how this really works is if you wanted to restore your website, what we're going to do is we're going to click this button and it's going to send this specific file that uh, does all the unzipping and figures everything out for us. We're going to send this to our destination, which would be our home directory. We would basically put this in there first and then we'd want to um, put the download file in. Uh, we want to put our download file in the um, in our root file folder as well for our website. And then we would delete everything else. I'm just going to skip that step and we're just going to move it to restore your website engineer.com just because. So what we want to do is we want to just go in here and we want to restore to local because it's going to my same server. And so it is just going to go ahead. It's saying sending the import file. This may take a few seconds. Of course it will. It's always taking a few seconds. This is still taking a few seconds. Um, let's see. What else can we talk about while we waited? Um, the, I guess the, we'll talk about an FTP editor right now. I use one called Transmit, and Transmit is a Mac-only app, but there's lots of them out there. There's one called CyberDuck. There's one called FileZilla, and FTP client sounds very like a very technical type program, and all it is is basically a, it is a program that runs on your computer that allows you to look at files on a server. That's all it is, essentially. Like It's like the Finder on your, your Mac or your, your Windows Windows. Explorer on your Windows computer, like it's those exact same things. So it just allows you to see files on your server. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like on Transmit real quick. So Transmit is the app. Here's my local computer. Here's all my files on my computer. And here's all my files right here on my, my web host. And what happens is we can go into, let's see, it's under Restore. Um, so we can go into Restore and we can look to see, and there should be a file in here called importbuddy.php. Well, that's no good. Let's see if it works this time. Authentication failed. Um, so as I as I'm working through this, it basically is it, I need a username and password to go in and log into our. Um, to log into my server. You don't want just anyone being able to get in to look at the files that are on your website. And so let's go ahead and see if this works now. I found the password in one password, I think. I'll try restarting and transmit. Basically though, we don't necessarily need this. I just wanted to kind of show that, hey, that file is there. And we wanted to you know, make sure that the file's there. Um, we'll just keep moving on. And as we're waiting for the next thing, then I'll, I'll see if I can get this FTP thing working. But okay, so the first step is done. We've, we've sent import buddy to our destination. Now we wanna download a backup file and set, or send it directly to the destination by using the send file option. So we, we're gonna do this one that just happened five minutes ago. So it's got Got all of our posts and pages, hopefully, and um, or maybe let's do let's do the one that was back up. We need the full database, so the full, the complete one. So let's do this one right here, and we are going to send this. 
and we're going to send it to restore, which is something that I set up already. Uh, and then it says your file has been scheduled to send. It'll arrive shortly and you'll be notified by email if any problems are encountered. And so we'll go ahead and do that. We'll click that button and you can see that it's, I guess, that was me hovering over something with that thing. So it is taking a little bit of time. It is setting this thing up. And let's go ahead and let's see if I can log into my FTP client. Uh, so we're still working on that. Uh, just to, <laughs> still can't log into my FTP client. Of course, that is just wonderful. Um, let's see what we can do now is we'll, what we what the next step is. So we've uploaded uh, the import buddy and the download file to the destination. We've already done that because we've sent them from here and we've sent them from there. And then what we need to do is we need to navigate to the uploaded um, website. So we're going to put your website.com slash import buddy. So let's do that. Let's just copy this text right here. And then we want to go to restore. We're going to hit slash and then we'll say slash import buddy. And in theory, if the files are there, then we should be able to restore our website from there. Okay, so we have, um, we select the backup to restore. There's one that's already in there. That's the one that we want. And we want to restore from backup. And we want to do all the files and the database as well. There's advanced options if you really wanted to um, look at it, but I never typically don't do that. And then when you click the restore backup button. So we're gonna wait while these files are restored. Let's see, is this, um, wonder if there's something goofy that's going on that's with my username and password for my FTP client that's kind of stalling this out right now. We will see. We'll just watch all the spinning everything take place. Um, so this is just restoring the files. And again, we would do this on our own server, but I want to make sure I don't really want to break things that are going on with um, with with the live site that we're working on right now. So. Let's take a look here. Oh. So as we get this finished up, um, it's restoring files. And then in theory, we should be able to go to restore.yourwebsiteengineer.com and it will show everything that's there. And we'll be able to see exactly what our website looks like. I mean, the, we're just restoring from the website before. So let's do that. I actually, I am in my FTP client. So I'm trying to see if we can get the... Uh, we'll create a new username, I guess, just while we're waiting. This is so frustrating. It's all about sitting around and waiting. Unable to restore. I think that's because my uh, my web my uh, FTP client for some reason my I don't know if my access changed or it's of course a hosting issue that's happening right now during the course of a live webinar so let's see what's happening when this is finished and hopefully we can get everything set up and good to go for this um, the last piece of this puzzle otherwise I may have to record this later and just finish it at another time when I can get into my server and whatnot so Let's go ahead and we'll try. I'm, I'm over on another another page. I am trying to um, get my FTP access to see if I can get in. Let's see. Um, so this is one of the things like when you do a restore, it's not super fast. Like it doesn't always happen right away. Like it does take some time sometimes that um, that you you may be frustrated and it's just a matter of uh, staying calm thinking about the steps that you're taking and eventually it will um it will restore in theory all right i did get the um i did get an ftp client that got logged in so that is good i'm in and so we'll continue this and then we can actually move on to the rest of the webinar so Let's see, we want to, the database setting, so that's the third step. So we've, we've added all the files. Now it wants to know what our, um, if we needed to change anything, like if we wanted to change the database name, we can do all of these things if we really wanted to. Um, that's not a big deal. I, I think all of these are fine that we can just go ahead and, and go to the next step. Or I guess you have to do the, you click this button and it just moves all of that stuff over for you. You can change the password if you wanted to, and then it'll update all of the things in the password boxes um, in the wp-config files and all that good stuff. Let's see. The specified prefix appears to already exist in the database. Restoring, oh, we don't want to do that. So let's make it live. We'll just call this live. 
So it does some checks there. If we were just restoring our website on top of our same website, it would have been fine to keep those the same. But I'm putting the same, I'm, I'm trying to run two sites on, I can't really do that on one database. So we wanna make sure that that is set. And then we want to say that we are changing the URL settings. If you are changing, if you're restoring, of course, it would just be the exact same. And so we're doing that here. So kind of what, what this part of the, what this part is doing is actually going through and showing you how you would move a site if you wanted to. Um, so that's, that's um, what's going on. There's a question that says, can you repeat the FTP name for Windows, please? I think you can use one called FileZilla. Uh, it's a free program that you can use that gives you the ability to go in and look at your server and whatnot. So that is that. Uh, let's see, verify imported site before cleaning up. So we want to click on this and we want to go to see what does it look like? Does it look like anything? Um, it doesn't look like there's anything there, but there indeed is. So it does have a hello world post. This was one of the, so this was one of the backups that we did from a little while ago. And so hello world is the only thing that was saved there during the course of that backup. So that's, I mean, our site looks like this test on live webinar, and then we've got backup. And so that looks like that. Um, so that looks good. so we want to say, yep, everything looks good. And we, of course, we'd look at it all regularly beforehand. Um, what, what we can do is we can, now that this FTP client is open, I can show you that if I go into the restore file, it does have this backup file here and it's got some database backups that are in there and all kinds of stuff. So these are all the files that you can just go ahead and delete based on everything looks good. And then we can go ahead and finish the cleanup. And then your site should be good to go. You should be able to log right back in with the same username and all that good jazz and get that all set up and looking looking good. If we wanted to, we could go ahead and do that. We could see that. Let's see. Let's just go in and try to um, WP admin. Let's see if I can remember what the username was. And looks good. I mean, it's got uh, Vault Press, it's got Backup Buddy, it's got the plugins installed. It looks like it's good to go. It's pretty simple. I took this snapshot before I installed BackWP up on the other program or the other site. So everything looks good there. So that's how you would restore that backup. Um, I'm going to try to do, uh, let's see if we can go back to backups and see if I can restore this one one more time. Um, I'm thinking that there was some sort of a crazy server thing, which is why I couldn't log in and why the um, why Backup Buddy couldn't restore. So let's go ahead and just try a restore one more time and see what happens. Well, and while that's doing that, let's go over to BackWP Up. BackWP Up is going to be the most complicated of the three. Of course, it is because um, we're just using the free version. So it does a really good job of backing up our website, but it also um, it doesn't do a very good job of easily and user friendly, like walking us through how to restore a backup like um, the other two did. So let's see, is that one ready? It's changed site, it was restore now. And let's see if this one works any faster now that everything's working on my server. Um, so back to BP up, I've got a couple of backups that are set up in here. There's a full version of a backup and there's just a database version. If you wanted to, you could just download the database backup if you just needed that real, real quick, or you can go all the way down to the backups area for your website. So you want to go and you want to make sure that you do have backups set up and see if they're actually working. So we've got the, the databases right here. It's kind of a goofy way to, to look at these because we're looking at the folder database only. And if we want to see full backup, then we have to change the destination and then it relists everything. So you can't see like backup buddy. You could see like all of the backups in one place. But here you actually have to go to look at those different versions. So how you actually... How you actually have to do this is you have to download and you have to download the files and then you can upload them back up to your server. So it's a little bit on the tedious side. I'm gonna um, just go download this so we have it, and then we'll go ahead and we'll download the other version so we have that as well. So we want the database version only. Um, so we need to change destination, and then we will go ahead and download this one as well. So we got those two coming. We'll see if those happen. Um, the restore is still um, still restoring. It looks like it's it's at least working now. So that's a good thing. And we've got the backup here, so we can show this in Finder. And so if we look at that, 
um, here. Let's put that on the desktop so we can see that. Um, that basically has um, a little bit of information about the backup readme, how that works. And then it also has the complete database file. So the database file is there. And say, for example, we wanted to restore the database. You could go into your, your site's um, control panel. You could go in there and you could upload the, the SQL document. So basically you import it and then it rewrites your entire database and then it fixes it. Or what I discovered today, which is a really cool neat tool is called adminner. And this is something that I've never heard of. And we're going to try it live, of course, on a webinar, because why else once you do things? I mean, we have to do things live, right? Um, that's still working. Um, so basically what you can do is you can just start, um, it's, it's a way for you to easily connect to WP admin or, or to the, um, to PHP my admin, excuse me. And so you can do this inside of WordPress if you wanted to, or you could do it in a new tab. I'm just gonna go click here and do it in a new tab. And then what we can do is we can upload right to PHP my admin, which it looks kind of wonky. It's stripped a lot of the formatting and whatnot, but this is um, what your database looks like. And here is all the stuff in your database. And it looks like we've got, it's still um, cleaning up. Import buddy must be still, um, Maybe not, um, but you can see that we've got live and we've got, um, or we've got the live underscore and we've got the VFN underscore. And so we've got both of these. So basically when it was creating the new, um, when it was restoring from from backup to restore, then it was it duplicated all of the files here. So we've got twice as many, um, we've got, we've got twice as many, tables in our database as we need. I mean, they're not necessarily, we don't have to remove them or anything, but this basically shows all of that. So what we can do is we actually go over to import and this is a, something that you can do inside of PHP My Admin. I think this is really slick that we can get to it right from here without having to go to our Word or into our C panel, try to figure out what that is or what password that may be. But if we go back over to desktop and go into your website engineer, um, do this and execute, and we're going to see if we can just break all kinds of things. So it does say, um, please contact support. Awesome. Um, fantastic. We will have to do things the old school way. Um, we'll have to go into the C panel here and let's take a look at <clears throat> the C panel for our website. So essentially what we need to do is we can go wherever you're hosting. This site is on a two hosting, and then you just kind of, you find, you scroll down or you can type in, um, PHP, my admin. And that will redirect you to the PHP My Admin section of your website. And then you can use the import feature. And we can uh, choose a file from our computer. We're going to choose this one right here. And we are going to go. We may or may not get an error on here. We'll, we'll just go ahead and see. Yeah, so it's telling us that we already have tables. There's already tables in our database um, that have these names. And so what we'd have to do is first we have to go in and I'm going to stop this backup because that's going to do all kinds of crazy things if I'm back and I'm doing things. So, um, so what we need to do is we can go into our databases. We can go into, let's see, which one is that one called? Uh... It's this one. Good guess. And so what we can do is we can actually just go in here and we're going to drop all of these tables because we have a full database backup and restore. And we'll just go ahead and we will say drop. And that's going to remove all of those. And now in theory, if we go to this page, it's going to be blank or give us an error of some kind because there's nothing in the database. There's nothing to get. Um, but we can go back to import and we're going to import that file. And indeed it says it wants us to install WordPress because it knows that WordPress is there, but it doesn't have a database or anything set up. And what we can do is we can say go and be patient as it loads, like everything else on this webinar. It's been successful. Um, 140 queries have been imported. So if we now, um, let's go like this and see, hello world. This was a, a backup from previously. And so that's how you actually have to go in and do a restore 
to a back WP up site that you have the database access to. There's no uh, quick and easy UI to do it. It takes a little, a few steps. I really wish, wish this program would work. That would be really cool. I wonder if it was because that error happened because those tables were still in the database. We could try this. Let's try this again real quick. Um, let's see if we go here. Oh, that plugin isn't there now. Uh, oh, what happens when you play with all of these things? So this, what happened was, and, and why, why these plugins were still here, we just restored the database. And so that database didn't know that that was there. So it just turned that any plugin off that it didn't know that was there in the backup. Um, if we would do a full restore. So what the restore would look like is we would have to go in. Um, we would go into the, let's just go into the backups folder. And then we would go into WP content. And then we would go into whatever we wanted to back up or restore. So we'll have to go, we'd have to know what files um, goofed up. Maybe we want to restore all the plugins from a previous time. What we would do is we would download to our computer, we would unzip them, and then we would take FTP and we would just move them over. It's as simple as like if I go into plugins, um, if I go to Dropbox and sites is where all my sites are located. Like I could just go in and on your website engineer.com, I have, let's see, we see what plugins I have. You could do something as simple as as like twit git. We can just go ahead and just drag this over. The cool part about um, how an FTP client works is it just, it knows that you're moving something to a server. So it doesn't like move it, it copies it, which is pretty nice. So now twit git is over here. And then if we would do a refresh on this page, we can see that twit git is now here. So backup or back WP up uh, is a little bit more cumbersome when it comes to doing a restore, um, but you can do it. You can completely um, back it up if you wanna have a little bit of knowledge. If you wanna play around with the WordPress dashboard just a little bit and a little bit inside of FTP and inside of your um, cPanel, if that is something that interests you or you're excited about trying to learn, then that would be something that you could do within your um, with with the free version of back WP up if you want a more simplistic approach you know you pay a little bit of money and it just does it for you then vault press or backup buddy are two great solutions vault press is perfect if you just have one site and or backup buddy is great if you have multiple sites because vault press even though it's a one-time fee it's a one-time fee once per year and then you have to pay for um, additional access to updates and uh, support and so that's something to think about I'm gonna do this real quick while we are while we're still here feel free to ask any questions if you see if you if there's any questions that you may have about really anything if you're interested in learning about um, backups or anything that I covered feel free to ask that sorry for all the um, the little technical mishaps of course that happens on live webinars even though you practice and you get things ready and you're ready to go um, let's see what happens if now if we do a refresh here um, I've deleted these tables I really want to see if this plugin adminner works and I'm guessing that it didn't upload because the files were st or the, the tables were still there. So I wiped out all the tables. Uh, of course. Huh. Interesting. So I will take back my recommendation of adminner. It doesn't look like it would work very easily. It looks like you can go in, you can manage your database quickly and easily, but it doesn't allow you to go in and, and do a restore from there. Let's go back. We'll add these files back. Um, Mark asked, which, which backup plugin do I use? And I use vault press on all of my sites and mainly because it allows me to, um, quote unquote, dog food, the products that we offer at automatic. I did a vault press rotation, uh, last year about this time. And so I went in and actually during my rotation, I set up all my websites with vault press and just haven't turned back. It's been so simple and easy that it just works again. I don't set that up on the sites that, you know, don't mean anything, you know, like if I'm doing a webinar, like I don't set up that, you know, if it's going to be a site that I disable real quickly or a client site, you know, uh, most of the time with my workflow, I have multiple versions of my website anyways, because I develop everything locally. So I had an entire version of the website locally, and then I push it to the live server. So there's a duplicate version there. So if it's something that's really not that big important, or if it's a short, um, a short project for me, then I typically don't start backing up until like the site is live. And when I had clients, 
sense. Like then it was the client's opportunity to set up and, and, and figure out what their backup solution was. Um, depending on the project, sometimes the projects I use my vault pro or my, my backup buddy license on their website, as long as I was managing it, that follows under the terms of service and the license agreement with, um, iThemes. And so that's, um, that's what I, that's how I did it in the, in my former life. Uh, Mark asks, have you seen any conflicts between the backup plugins and other codes on the sites? Um, no, not really. Like, I haven't really seen any conflicts that, oh, it was the backup plugin that caused the website to stop working. So I think most of them work pretty well. They're just basically copying data and um, they don't really ex uh, they don't really mess around with the front end of the site or break things on the front end. Um, Doug says, um, do you not recommend relying on the host backup service? He says, I use Bluehost and they offer a backup. Yeah, I do. I, I think they're a great um, additional step. I know that my website is running on VaultPress and I have a local copy in Dropbox as a backup. And the, the hosting company that I use, Flywheel, they have they run a backup every single day. So I've got three versions of my website. It just depends on how easy it is to restore from Bluehost. I guess that would have been a great example to, to add to this mix as well is how to restore something from um, Bluehost. Sometimes with those, like they can only restore like with their technical support team. So you have to like, you can't do it right away. You have to rely on somebody else. So that's something to think about, Doug. I just make sure that you spend a little bit of time and figure out, like do a practice, try to restore a website for something like make a, make a silly post or, you know, do something that's kind of, if you, if you do like, if it has full backups, you can add plugins and so add two or three plugins, but don't activate them and then try to do a restore and see if it wipes out those plugins just to see how those work. Um, that's always the big thing too. It doesn't matter which one works or which one that's, that you use. It's just a matter of, okay, take a little bit of time and figure out how it works. So if this ever happens, then you have the ability to go in and actually fix a broken website. So that's something to think about as well. Um, Doug said Bluehost lost the site. I hired someone to do with Bluehost. So it doesn't, so he doesn't trust them. So that's another thing. Like when you have your backups in place, like you can check them regularly. They're inside your WordPress dashboard. You know that things are backed up. Then that, that helps out a lot. It gives you a little peace of mind and you kind of can, um, you just feel so much better that you're not going to lose a website. And Mark says um, that you always have more than one backup. That is a good a case. I also recommend putting backups in different places. Like you don't want to back up your website at different times and put them all on your FTP client or all on Amazon S3 or all in iTheme stash or wherever, like put them in multiple places so that in case something happens, you can restore. Like I would hate to have to restore every um, page of show notes for the 200 plus the 250 plus web or podcast episodes that I have done. I ju it just won't happen. Like I wouldn't do it. And so I'm, I'm so thankful that I've got backups in place and thankfully I haven't had a server crash or anything that's been um, tragic lately. I have, I had to restore f because I've had malware maybe four years ago and having a backup was very helpful in that case. So I didn't have to go through and comb through all the files on my website to see what had you know, malicious code in. So that's a good thing. Um, Ross says, can you do a restore to your local machine to test a backup? Yeah. Um, I don't think you can do it with, uh, let's see with, uh, let's talk about all three options with, um, oh, this, this, oh, I, I turned it off. That's why, um, with vault press, you would have to go in with vault press and you would do a restore. And then I think you just want to, um, you can actually download all the files and then you would have to manually on your, on your local host, you would still have to do the, like if I go to um, local host, it will show me the man, even local host is, is loading slowly for me today. Um, local host, this is with desktop server. It shows me all of the stuff. So if I wanted to go into, like I have 4.4 and I could go into the database and then you could go and you could update that. You can import your, um, the database files. Basically with all three of the ver versions, you have to download both the files and the database. Now, granted, when you download the files, it's going to be pretty quick because you just download the files, you unzip them and you move them to your local directory. Like that's pretty simple. When you have to do a manual restore that way to your server, you have to download everything and it could be like tens of gigs worth of videos and movies and stuff. Then if you have to push that all back up to your FTP through FTP to your server, that could take a little while. Um, so that would be, that's a good thing to do, or it's easy once you're putting it to your local site. So that's something you can do. 
Um, so yeah, that is a great question, Ross. Uh, there's another question that says that anyone knows a good tutorial on how to set up a local host. I just recommend using desktop server. It's probably one of the simplest tools and you basically install it and it, it does pretty much everything for you. You just install it. It's Mac or PC. You can go in, you can say, I want to create a new site. It does everything for you. It creates the login and all that kind of stuff. And then you can import um, your websites right into there. So um, server press and desktop server is the bomb. It's the best. Um, so that's what I would recommend there. They do have a free version. The free version you can still use. You can use it for up to three sites. And uh, the only problem is with that one, it doesn't unlock the feature to do like a, you can actually like move a website via like um, a duplicator and different plugins like that. And that automated system won't work within desktop server unless you unlock the premium version, which is a hundred dollars per year. Oh, so uh, Sabine has is just having problems getting it to work. And um, I would recommend doing that or go ahead and reach out to them. Um, they do have a phone number. Uh, the, the, the team is super great. They do a great job of even responding to email requests and saying that it's not working or there's some sort of configuration issue. Like they're super smart people and they know exactly um, how they do it. I think they have like on their support side, they do have... Um, and, they, they might have some tutorials on here, how, how to get started installing, um, manually installing on Windows, how to put it on Mac, um, uninstalling, and things like that. So I definitely check those out and see. Uh, totally worth the, the $100 per year and uh, just a, a great tool and great piece of technology. Um, that's, I mean, I run all of my websites, the ones that are critical to me, I do everything locally first and then push that information to the cloud. Um, so if there's no more questions, we're right about the hour mark. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. I'll stay here for just a minute or so to see if there's any other questions, but thanks for tuning in and sticking with the technical difficulties this morning. Of course that happens, um, while we, we do things live and, uh, I hope that you grasp a little bit of the concept of how, how to restore a website from a backup. So there's always two pieces of a restore. There's a database that's all your settings, your configurations, your, your you know, whether your plugins are turned on and turned off, what plugins are, you know, like are installed, what theme is being active, um, all the settings for all the plugins, all the widgets, that stuff is saved in the database. And their posts, your pages, of course, all that is in the database as well. Um, if you're using like a form plugin, then all that field, all that stuff is saved in your database. But if you, you know, so most of the time, if your website gets hacked or there's malware on it, those are on your theme files or your database file or not your database. It's everything but the database could be affected from from this malware attack. Again, there could be some malware inside of the, the database depending on how well the hack is, but most of the time you need a full restore to get rid of all that stuff from your website. So um, so that's pretty much what I wanted to share today. There is going to be the webinar replay, of course. We'll get to that and you get an email about that with all this and you can access this um, when you have a chance and when you have the opportunity to Hopefully that you do a practice run with this now so that if the catastrophe does happen, it doesn't take you days and days and days to try to figure out how to restore a backup, especially if you're an online store or, you know, you have a lot of traffic, things like that. It really kind of hurts your, your budget and your productivity when you don't have your website up and working. So that's what I wanted to, um, and the, uh, that's kind of what I wanted to share this week. Uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this webinar up. Thanks so much for tuning in, hanging out, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.